everything around is bursting into life and I don't have to strain to hear the beat of your heart oh 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 oh, oh. And all the world is under fire the skies are threatened Welcome to online worship at Easter Lutheran Church. I'm Pastor Steve. Today, Pastor Brandon will bring bringing the sermon. Now, this week, I broke out my alb and my stole because this is a very special Sunday. It is All Saints Day. It's that week where we stop, we light a candle, and we remember those saints and those loved ones who have gone before us in death. And so right now, uh, I want to pause and make sure that you're prepared for this worship service, because not only is it All Saints Day, it's also a communion Sunday. So I'd like you to make sure you have two different things. First of all, grab your communion elements and grab a candle so that later in the service, Pastor Megan is going to lead us through the lighting of a candle and the remembrance of All Saints. So you can pause the video right now and go grab those two things. All right, welcome back. Well, I've got a few announcements for you before we go into our worship service. First of all, we are done with outdoor worship. We went as long as we could, but we got snowed out last week. And so we've, we're regrouping. And on November 15th, we are coming inside at 9 a.m. at Easter on the Hill and at 10 a.m. at Easter by the Lake. And what you'll need to do is go to the website, click on worship, and you'll find a place where you can re reserve your seats. And actually, it'll print out a ticket for you and you'll know exactly where you're sitting and know that your spot will be reserved for you. So stay tuned for more details about that. Now, later that same day on the 15th, we're going to have a tie blanket exercise and an event for our families at one o'clock at Easter by the Lake. If you wanna to come together in a very safe, socially distanced manner, we're going to 
uh, make tie blankets in little family units so that uh, we can give those and serve our neighbors who need to stay warm. It's gonna be a great event. Check the website under Youth and Family for more details about that. And now this week, we just wanna give a shout out to our confirmants once again. This is the second weekend where we have confirmation services on Saturday and Sunday. Over 60 confirmants are professing their faith publicly this, uh, these last two weekends. And then finally, a special shout out to our friends at Stonehaven and Egan Point. Thanks for joining us in worship. We're so glad that we can offer this worship service for you. So that's all the announcements. Now let's take a deep breath as we begin our All Saints worship service. God who granted life through Elijah, and every age you have sent faithful people who live their lives in witness to your love and truth. Inspire us with the memory of these beloved servants, whose faithfulness led us in the way of the cross, and give us courage to bear full witness with our lives to your son's victory over sin and death, for he lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. So 
sword of anger come and forgive all those who have wronged make us one spirit of god make us one so the world may know you sent him heaven's perfect son And I'm going to tell you a children's message today. We're going to hear a story about a man named Elijah. And he was a friend of God's. And Elijah was walking to a town, but it was a long way. And it was a long, dusty road. And it was hot. And Elijah kept walking and walking. And his tummy was gurgling. Does that ever happen to you? When you're hungry? Oh, he was so hungry and his tummy was gurgling and he kept walking and it was hot. And he came across a woman and he asked the woman, do you have any food or water for me? And the woman was kind of sad because she wanted to help him. And she told him she only had a little bit of oil. and just a little bit of flour to make only one biscuit for her and her son. That's all she had. She didn't have anything else. And then as she was mixing and looking into her basket, she was amazed. There was more oil and flour. Now she would have enough to feed Elijah too. She was so happy to help. She was mixing it and mixing it and looked back. And again, she was amazed. More oil and flour and more. God provided. Elijah said that God would. She was so happy to help. Who can you help? Tell your people around you right now. Who can you help today? The woman was so happy when she helped. So let's pray. Repeat after me. Hey, God. Thank you for the woman who helped Elijah. We are so thankful for people who help us. Amen. So who can you help today? What are you thankful for? Remember, God loves you, and we do too. 
Well, hello. It's great to be together for worship again. We continue our worship series, People of Faith, Stories of Faith. Last week, we learned from King David that God is always reforming our lives, our worship, our church, not in our own image and what we want to do, but in God's image and where God wants us to go and what God wants us to do. Today, we learn from Elijah and a widow at Zarephath about trusting in God's gift of new life. A lot has happened since worship last week. David is no longer king. In fact, Israel has split into a northern kingdom and a southern kingdom. The northern kingdom is Israel. The southern kingdom is Judah. King Ahab is king over northern Israel. And Ahab is considered a terrible king. Instead of leading the people faithfully in worship of God, King Ahab builds altars to false gods. He marries Jezebel and she comes from a place called Phoenicia and brings her worship of the gods Baal and Asherah with her. Baal was thought to be God of the rain and thunderstorms. And together with Asherah, they made sure that the land was fertile and produced lots of food for people to eat. Elijah tells King Ahab, you shouldn't do this. Follow only the one true God. In fact, since King Ahab won't listen to Elijah, Elijah tells him that the Lord will send a drought, showing power over Baal, thought to be king uh, or God of the rainstorms, and proving to be the one true God. Now, most kings don't like being told that they're wrong. And so Elijah runs in fear and God provides for him even there. God tells him to go and stay by a stream where he'll get water. And God provides food for Elijah by sending ravens with food. Now, ravens were considered unclean animals. Isn't that interesting? Sometimes God provides for us in the most unlikely ways. The story of Elijah shows us many things. One of those is that God is a God of new life. Now, eventually, because of the drought, the stream dries up and Elijah has to move on to find a new place for food and water. And that's where we pick up with today's reading. Today's reading is 1 Kings 17, 8 through 24. Then the word of the Lord came to him, saying, Go now to Zarephath, which belongs to Sidon, and live there, for I have commanded a widow there to feed you. So he set out and went to Zarephath. When he came to the gates of the town, a widow was there gathering sticks. He called to her and said, Bring me a little water in a vessel, so that I may drink. As she was going to bring it, he called to her and said, Bring me a morsel of bread in your hand. But she said, As the Lord your God lives, I have nothing baked, only a couple handfuls of meal in a jar and a little oil in the jug. I am now gathering a couple of sticks so that I may go home and prepare it for my son that we may eat it and die. Elijah said to her, do not be afraid. Go and do as I have as go and do as you have said. But first, make me a little cake of it and bring it to me. And afterwards, make something for yourself and your son. For thus says the Lord, the God of Israel: The jar of meal will not be empty, and the jug of oil will not fail until the day the Lord sends rain on the earth. She went and did as Elijah said, so that she as well as He and her household ate for many days. The jar of meal was not emptied, neither did the jug of oil fail, according to the words of the Lord as he spoke them, as spoken by Elijah. After this, the son of the woman, the mistress of the house, became ill. His illness was so severe that there was no breath left in him. She then said to Elijah, What have you against me, O man of God? You have come to me to bring my sin to remembrance and to cause the death of my son. But he said to her, give me your son. He took him from her bosom and carried him to the upper chamber where he was lodging and laid him on his own bed. He cried out to the Lord, O Lord, my God, have you brought calamity even upon the widow with whom I am staying by killing her son? Then he stretched himself upon the child three times and cried out to the Lord, O Lord, my God, let this child's life come into him again. The Lord listened to the voice of Elijah. The life of the child came into him again, and he revived. 
Elijah took the child, brought him down from the upper chamber in the house, and gave him to his mother. And then Elijah said, See, your son is alive. So the woman said to Elijah, Now I know that you are a man of God, and that the word of the Lord is your the word of the Lord in your mouth is the truth. What a powerful story. Everywhere Elijah turns, the situation is desperate. Earlier, he fled for his life without food or water. So God sent him to a stream and God sent ravens to bring him food. But eventually the water runs out. So God sends Elijah to the town of Zarephath, which is in Phoenicia, where he finds a widow. Remember Phoenicia? Yes, that's where Jezebel is from, the place where they worship false gods. Elijah is sent to a foreign country considered the enemy, to people who don't worship the one true God. These are supposed to be where the bad people are, and yet Elijah finds a faithful widow. Sometimes faith and trust are found in the most unlikely places. I think maybe that's important to remember as we come up on election day, that sometimes faith and trust are found in unlikely places, even among people we believe are wrong, even among people we disagree with. And that brings us to the next part of our story. In today's story, the widow has nearly nothing left. Elijah finds her outside the city gate collecting sticks so she can make one last fire to use her last bit of flour and her last bit of oil to make her and her son a bite to eat, and then they can die. Everywhere Elijah turns, the situation is desperate. But Elijah tells the widow to first make him a cake and then feed herself and her son. Elijah tells her the Lord, the God of Israel, not Asherah, not Baal, but the Lord, the God of Israel, says that the flour and oil will not run out until it rains again. The widow considered a foreigner who doesn't know Elijah or maybe even doesn't even know the Lord as far as we know, trusts the promise, does as Elijah requests, and God again provides new life. The flour and oil do not run out. So I'm going to add to this bowl, there's a little bit of water in here, a little bit of flour and a little bit of oil, and I'm going to mix that up for us. Phew! She's got oil. She's got flour, but then her son dies. Elijah cries out to God three times. God hears Elijah's cry, and God gives the widow's son new life again. Everywhere Elijah turns, the situation is desperate. But at each turn, God provides new life. Sarah Koenig, Associate Professor of Biblical Studies at Seattle Pacific University, points out that God's provision is not ultimate. The brook dries up. The flour and oil will last only until it rains again. And we are all tragically aware that the sun will ultimately die again one day, just like we all will die. This isn't to say that God's gifts are not powerful or good. But like Elijah, we live on the edge of trust. We can only see a little bit ahead and God provides enough to get us only so far. And yet when new needs arise, God again provides. Sometimes it's only one day at a time, like we pray in the Lord's Prayer. We wish we had a guarantee, perhaps a 30-day or 30-year glimpse into the future money-back guarantee. But in today's story, we learn from Elijah and the widow, from their trust that God's grace, God's gift of new life comes one drink, one wheat cake at a time. We are blessed with the challenge and the joy of trusting God again and again and again. And like the widow in today's story, there are people in our neighborhoods who are suffering unfairly, who are struggling just to find food, employment, safe housing, people who are living with illness or strife, and our neighbors need us to show up as God's gift of new life in simple yet powerful ways. The widow giving in the midst of a famine is perhaps very telling to our time right now, because we're each asked to give whatever we can to bring God's gift of new life into the world. It's no secret, we're coming up on our annual appeal. We need your financial support so your church can continue to support you in your spiritual needs and the needs of the community around us. Everyone has something to give. The widow gives a little bit of dough, a little bite of bread to Elijah, and God makes that enough to sustain all of them. We also think of the many ways God gifts us with money, abilities, and time, 
all these gifts are from God, given with the purpose of bringing new life into the world. God heals and God feeds, and it is through you and through me. Eventually, those gifts are used. And so God keeps calling forth faithful people to continue giving and living generously. And I realize there's a lot going on in this sermon today because it's also All Saints Sunday, the day that we remember all the faithful people that God put into our lives, people who guided us and inspired us and mentored us with their lives of faith lived out in the world, just like the widow who believed the promise. Today, I'm remembering my grandma Gladys. She was a nurse and a teacher at a community college. Her gift of teaching and nursing literally saved and impacted thousands of lives. You know, I think up until this pandemic, we took the gifts that nurses and teachers have to share with us for granted, didn't we? But those, nurture, but those nurses and teachers have a big purpose in bringing new life into the world. And I'm remembering my best friend in grade school, BP. He was diagnosed with terminal brain cancer in eighth grade, yet his zeal for life was contagious. With each appointment, he simply trusted his parents, got in the car and went. Even in the face of death, he kept living by playing baseball and basketball. And each step of the way, he trusted his family and doctors and God one day at a time. Even though the next day was never promised, only God's love and presence in Jesus Christ is promised. And I found comfort in that at BP's funeral. Who are you remembering today? On All Saints Day, we celebrate God's gift of new life. And the story God's gift of new life comes to the widow's son. Sure, it's pretty rare that we hear or see about somebody dying and rising right before our eyes. But we do know and believe God's promise that death does not have the final word. Through Jesus Christ, our God gives eternal life. Today, we celebrate God's gift of new life for our loved ones who have gone before us. We celebrate the gift of new life that comes to us each and every day as we live on the edge of trust and we celebrate God's gift of new life that comes into the world to our neighbors through each one of us. When circumstances are desperate, as streams run dry, as bread is running out, and as we take our last breath, God promises to meet us there and offer yet new life again. Oh, 
Through the prophet Isaiah, God promises, do not fear for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, you are mine. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. In the book of Romans, the Apostle Paul declares, we do not live to ourselves and we do not die to ourselves. If we live, we live to the Lord, and if we die, we die to the Lord. So then whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. Rejoice, people of God. Praise the Lord. We remember with joy all of God's saints in whose victory the angels rejoice and glorify the Son of God. Into the hands of our merciful Savior, we commend all God's servants, including those we name before our God now. Pauline A. McKenzie. <laughs> Esther Lillian Mary Miller. <laughs> Matthew Kent Brokel. <laughs> Gary Thomas Cable. Charles John Murphy, Evan Myron Christensen, Eric Gordon Eric Strip Jr., Karen Ruth Marie Everett, Stephen Lyle Hammer. In God's grace, our Creator claims each of us as saints redeemed by the life and love of our Savior, Jesus Christ. As we remember the example of all the faithful who have gone before us, I invite you at this time to light a candle to honor their lives and celebrate their witness. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with all the saints. Let us pray. Eternal God, you grant your people a new birth in baptism and entrust them to us to know and to love. As we thank you for these lives you share with us, help us now to release those we love to your mighty keeping. Bring us all to that day when we shall stand in your presence with all your saints in light eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Well, it's been a great story as we looked at Elijah and this widow from Zarephath and her incredible faithfulness and her willingness to share even when she seemed to have nothing. And as we think about that faithfulness and as we think about the saints that have gone before us, we just think about this incredible spirit of generosity. And as we come now to our offering moment, I just wanna lift up for you a reminder that on November 15th will be the culmination of our current appeal um, campaign. 
We've been talking about uh, the special needs that we have as a congregation and the ways that we can come together as a community. The money that we will raise with this campaign will go to respond to the pandemic, to work for racial justice, to connect with our community in deeper ways, and to sustain this ministry that God has called us to with excellence. You should have received a letter with a chart, and we, we ask you in this last week to prayerfully consider that chart and ask, what is God calling you to do, that next step that you can take? Because it is in love and with love and for love that we come together to partner with God in what God is doing in this world. And so now let's take a moment to worship God with our gifts and our offerings. Please pray with me the offering prayer. In you, gracious God, we find strength for today and hope for tomorrow. Work through us so that the whole church on earth and in heaven would praise you. With one voice, make these gifts which we bring before you into gifts of new life, through which we love you with all our whole hearts, and our neighbors as ourselves, through Jesus Christ, now and forever. Amen. Will you please pray with me? As Easter people filled with new life, let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. Gracious God, thank you for surrounding us with people of faith and stories of faith. Help us to place our trust and hope in you. Help us to return the many gifts you have given us, and help us to be new life for others. Lord, in your mercy. Eternal God, we thank you for the faithful saints you have placed in our life to nurture and guide us in our own faith journeys. We remember that your love is stronger than death and your passion fiercer than the grave as we celebrate your promise of new life even after death. Help us to be faithful witnesses to your love for all of those around us until we too are gathered in your internal, eternal embrace. Lord, in your mercy. God of all people, as we approach the election day, fill our hearts, minds, and mouths with words of respect and care for those we disagree with. Help us to remember that you are far bigger and greater than any earthly ruler. And as we place our trust and lives in you, align our hearts and lives with your justice and help us to work together across party lines to look out for the needs of the poor and the oppressed. Lord, in your mercy. Claiming God, we pray for our students who have affirmed their baptismal promises during confirmation worship these past two weekends. Thank you for claiming them as your children. And thank you for nurturing their faith through their family, friends, and this church. Thank you for your Holy Spirit that helps them trust in you and the journey ahead. Lord, in your mercy. Healing God, send your spirit to all of those who are sick in mind, body, or spirit including Melinda Martin, Maddie Lockard, Nicholas Moe, Sarah Benedict, Shannon Arndt, Mike Wagner, Jody Taylor, Blanche Brommer, Marian Newhar, and all of those we name before you. Comforting God, even in our grief, show us new life. Surround Don Wittenberg, Steve Moon, and all who mourn their loved ones with your promise for hope and peace. Lord, in your mercy. 
All this we pray in the name of the one who meets us where we are and gives us new life each day, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. And so on this All Saints Day, we come to this table of remembrance. We gather together to remember that on the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks and he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup and he gave thanks and he gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Now let's join our voices together and pray the way that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. 
And now, as we take this bread that is broken for you and this wine, all is ready. This is the body of Christ given for you. This is the blood of Christ shed for your forgiveness. And now, may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Let's pray. Oh, gracious God, it's been so good to be together today, to remember those dear saints who have gone before us, to remember you become flesh, to take the bread and the wine, and to remember your grace, your love, and your forgiveness. May we be encouraged in this moment and be sent out in your love and grace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Every breath.
been good to be together today in such a special service to remember our loved ones. And now as you go from this place, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you with grace and mercy. May the Lord look upon you with favor and grant you peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now, let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you.